everyone, welcome to Queensland. No, we are not in Vietnam yet, um, but this episode is about the build of Ruby Rose 2 taking place in Ho Chi Minh right now. As you guys know, this year we have been sailing in Australia. It has been absolutely amazing, but we have always had one eye on the Ruby Rose 2 boat build and it has been super exciting. We haven't been discussing it much, but today we're going to talk all about what is happening in that sea wind factory in Ho Chi Minh, how the 1370s are being built. We're looking at hull number one. As you guys know, we are hull number two, so we are looking forward to see what is happening with hull number one. And we're paying particularly close attention to the methods of boat construction that Sea Wind are using and that is the focus of this episode today. All the footage in this episode was filmed by the Sea Wind team in Ho Chi Minh. Thank you so much for sending that over. It's been edited by us and now presented to you. So I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you find it interesting and don't forget to give us a thumbs up, comment down below. I'm sure you guys have lots of thoughts and of course subscribe to our channel. Enjoy! <laughs> Now, for those of you who followed our boat design and build episodes with Antoine last year, you may recall how the Francois Peru team designed this amazing boat using 3D modeling software and a long history of boat design. However, getting the boat from a computer screen to a 45 foot physical shape is no mean feat. The journey starts with the 3D modeling software. While we have shown you the beautiful renders showing shaded, furnished and well-lit pictures of a Seawind 1370, Underneath every aspect of the boat has been computer designed. From weight distribution through conduit placement, it's all been thought out. And you never normally see this kind of behind the scenes footage unless you're a naval architect. But it's this information that is vital in the construction process. Now the first stage in building a physical boat is to build the plug. Simply speaking, this is the master mold. It is the shape of the final boat that the boat builder will use to make the molds. The mold is then used to manufacture the hulls. With the Seawind 1370, the hull design is transferred from the 3D modeling software to a five axis CNC milling machine. Think of a massive 3D printer and you're not far off the mark. And the advantages of using a five axis milling machine over a three axis is that the five axis gives you the ability to do undercuts. It gives you a far more refined shape and also because of the way the burr is held to the foam block, it gives you a smoother finish. The milling process starts with huge foam blocks. The CNC machine is essentially a large robotic sculptor. And what it does is it sculpts the blocks into the shape of the boat. Now the first pass is a coarse pass. That coarse burr gives you the basic shape of the boat. A fine burr then takes a second pass and gives you a smooth finish. Now even when the coarse and the fine passes are complete, you still have blocks that are made of foam. And this can have inclusions and is a little bit porous. So to get around this in the final finish, Seawind mill the initial foam blocks 10 millimeters smaller than they should be. The whole structure is then built up again in milling paste and when that is set, it is re-milled. This gives you that perfect marble finish, which is absolutely fantastic and will cast the perfect mold for the boats. With the seven sections complete, they are assembled, glassed and bonded together. This then leaves a completed plug, which is hand fed and sanded. This process adds another four weeks to the cycle. Now, when the whole thing is complete and perfectly smooth, the plug is now checked. It's checked by engineers who use experience in the field, as well as a 3D laser scanner to make sure that everything is perfect. This then results in a completed plug, a perfect master version of a final boat, and this will be used to make the molds. Now with the plug complete, a wax layer is applied. The mold is now constructed using fiberglass and a tooling gel coat to give a perfect negative image of the holes. With the mold complete, it is transported to the factory. And as for that multi-million dollar plug, well, it's cut into little pieces by chainsaw, thus protecting the IP. Now, before we move on to talk about construction, I do want to just mention the steel framework that holds this entire boat together. It is more than just something to allow the workers to actually do the lamination. This stops the mold from twisting. It also allows for thermal expansion by placement of expansion gaps. These expansion gaps are essential as the mold will expand with the polymerization process. But it is this steel framework that stops the mold from twisting and ensures that you get an absolutely millimeter fit 
which means you don't rely on filler and mastic when you are finishing the boat off. Now, before you start building a boat, you need to ensure that everyone comes out of the mold absolutely identical. This means understanding the heat, humidity and expansion characteristics of the materials you're working with. The Sea Wind factory is normally kept at 28 degrees Celsius with a humidity at about 75%. They also use a vinyl ester which is more stable at these higher tropical temperatures which means you get a more even cure. So with the mould complete, the steel framework in place and gantries with safety rails in place to protect the workers, the process of building can begin. Now the first step in this freshly waxed mold is to apply a test layer of gel coat. This is to make sure that it actually releases from the hull. Once this is set, the entire layer of gel coat is blown out with an air compressor and the gel coat spray applied. The cure time for this is about 60 minutes. After this comes the tie layer. The tie layer is a very thin layer of glass matting. It's actually 225 gram per square meter. And this allows you to get all the small crevices and the areas to be filled. And this layer is actually bonded with an impact resistant vinyl ester. Now, once the tie layer has been placed, you can then move on to the actual matting, whether that is carbon fiber or glass matting. Now it should be noted that the standard 1370 without any extra carbon parts has about 30% of the hull made in carbon fiber. That is going to reduce the weight considerably while maintaining the strength. And if you look at these shots from the factories, you can see that the bulkhead, the black carbon fiber bulkhead, you have black carbon fiber stringers and all these black parts are made in carbon fiber. This is going to ensure a lot of weight saving, a lot of strength, and it is going to make a very fast, comfortable and safe boat. With the carbon fiber and fiberglass in place, the foam claw is then applied. Now this is a brilliant sandwich material as it maintains the strength of the boat while keeping the weight down. This is absolutely essential in a performance catamaran. Now with the exception of the high stress areas like the engine bed and rudder post access, which are made in solid fiberglass, the whole hull is foam cored. Now you'll notice that foam core is not balsa wood. This means that you have a closed cell, lightweight and strong material that is impervious to water and rot. Now these foam core sections are all CNC milled and then vacuum infused into place to give a super strong hull shape. Now for extra nerd points, the foam core used is a dye vinyl cell H80 density with the nominal laminate being a 1200 gram quadrilaxle. You can also in this clip see the custom made foam core panels. Now these are lightly scored in two planes. This allows complex shapes to be molded, which you cannot do with wood. Now with everything in place, you can then move on to the infusion process. Now, for those of you who remember the lecture series with Antoine, there are different types of way of actually laminating a boat. You can do hand lamination, but this is a far superior process, the process of vacuum infusion. And it's superior because it gives a much better distribution of vinyl ester within the fiberglass and the carbon fiber matting. It also leads to less air inclusions. Now the whole process of bagging for vacuum infusion takes about 10 days. Essentially the entire hull has to be airtight. And only when it's airtight can you start the process of vacuum infusion. So the team over at Seawind are working on every individual seam to make sure there are no air leaks at all. When this is complete, the pipework is placed to allow the vinyl ester to be drawn through different areas of the boat at different times to exact a perfect vacuum cure. So with a completed vacuum bagging, the valves are opened in sequential order. With the first valve open, the vinyl ester is drawn through the pipework and into the hull. It's an absolutely fascinating process and the thousands of meters of pipework carry the vinyl ester to every crevice in this boat. The time lapse that you can see here shows the actual infusion process and it's fascinating to watch the level of vinyl ester rising up as that vacuum draws all the air out, thus creating a negative pressure and the negative pressure actually draws the vinyl ester into the hull. Amazing. Following the infusion process and a cure, 
The bagging is removed, it's all tidied up, and you are left with an absolutely perfect lightweight hull. This thing absolutely looks fantastic. It is super strong, and the final thing to do before she is popped out of the mold is to make sure you get those bulkheads in to support the structure internally. So up go those carbon fiber bulkheads on the crane and they are carefully lowered into place. As I said, this internal bracing is super important in a catamaran. It once again reduces the flexure of the hull. It also provides an area to stop squeaks if you bond it incorrectly. So with the curing process complete, let's take a walk through the starboard hull in this case. Everything you can see that is black here is carbon fiber. So you've got carbon fiber stringers, you've got carbon fiber inserts in the hull, you have carbon fiber bulkheads. And more importantly, look at these bulkheads. They are tabbed and glassed, which means they are super strong. And for those of you considering buying Cataran, no matter what the brand, make sure the manufacturer is glassing the bulkheads in. Also with the bagging removed, you can see the complexity of the shapes here. This to me is reminiscent of the HR Geiger stuff. It is all curved and bent in two planes, which is super clever. And it essentially means that lightly scored cross-cut foam core can be used to take an architectural drawing from a 3D model and make the most complex of shapes. It means that boat design is evolving hugely. And this is the final result as hull number one comes out of the mold. It is to me absolutely stunning. 45 foot of carbon fiber and glass hull, something which is gonna be super fast and super sturdy, super light and super safe. We are so excited. It is a beautiful, beautiful hull. And as the deck goes on, later on we'll be able to bring you those images as well. But before the deck comes the internal fitments. That means adding furniture, adding engines, electronics. It is a super complicated process. And this really is just the beginning of the journey. From here on, there's about another four to five months of construction. And this is simply stage one. But to say that we are excited is a massive understatement. We are so, so excited about this build. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. It was pretty technical, full of lots of information. I'm sure you guys have lots of thoughts and I hope you guys are getting ex as excited as we are. We are pumped. Later this year, we'll be going to Vietnam ourselves and filming the boat build ourselves. Until then, we will be continuing to put out these episodes of the uh, footage filmed in Ho Chi Minh and we'll, as I said, be doing the edit ourselves. So there's going to be lots more content regarding the build of the 1370 between now and the end of the year when we get to Ho Chi Minh ourselves. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next week with a brand new episode. See ya.